Oh, well, John, you certainly had to batten down the hatches towards the end of the game, but you've come away with the three points. What were your thoughts on the performance? Yeah, we knew it was going to be hard because uh, City, obviously, one of the, the best teams in the comp and uh, we knew it was going to be tough. But we uh, we thought that um, if we worked well together, and we did, we fought hard and we were organised defensively, that would make it tough for them. And then with the ball, that, um, you know, if we were calm and confident on the ball, we'll be able to hurt them, especially when they... Because it's difficult against City because they play a high line. And so they can win the ball back pretty quickly. But if you get them, you can actually hurt them and get them on the counter-attack. Uh, it's not like we want to play counter-attack in football, but occasionally when you play against a team like that, they make you play a little bit like that. And um, I thought that we created some good openings. Dylan took his goal well. And in the end, I thought it was a, a very good performance, especially that uh, how hard the boys worked. What does this do for this group, John? It very much feels like a statement. I mean, does it feel like a statement win to you and in terms of building confidence, kicking into the rest of the season? It's it's nice to win. It's also very nice to win a, a derby game. You saw our supporters after how excited they were and, and our players because it's, it's been tough for them um, over a period. So uh, it feels like, you know, that we're on the right track. There's a lot of improving to do and we will improve a lot more. So that, that, that's, that's a positive. We know that we need to pick up points now because we'll get stronger as the season goes on. We've still got players to come in. Um, the players that are, are starting are doing well and we know that we'll get better as the season goes on. So that, that's a positive. The, the biggest thing for me is, uh, and uh, you know, our football will get better with the ball, but you know, they, they defensively, uh, Western United conceded a lot of goals last year. We've haven't conceded from open play in the four games we've played. So that's that's a massive plus. And people talk about the back four, about the goalkeeper. It's the whole team. It's from the front. You saw Diamante chasing, fighting, you know, uh, closing down. If he's doing it, that just sets the tone for everyone else to do it. Uh, speaking of that, how much of a difference do you think Dylan Windsor Hall's made in that respect, allowing yeah. you to defend from the front? Yeah. Dylan was uh, tremendous. We, we worked a lot with Dylan in pre-season because uh, you know, it was something that he needed to improve on in his game. Um, we know how good he is in front of goal and what he can do and, and finish. Uh, and so in pre-season, we worked with him in terms of you know, when to go, what triggers that he needs to go on, um, when he needs to drop in and, and get compact again. Uh, so because you know Brisbane Raw play a little bit different to the way we want to play, so uh, I thought that he was outstanding. It, it, it's it, how can I say he's a pain for a defender, and that's what you want from your striker. I was going to use other words, but I thought I better not. <laughs> Just John, on the defensive front, obviously City tried to get the ball down the flanks and cross the ball in a lot, but it also looked like. A lot of the time you were setting up the, that you were sort of giving them pockets well outside the area where you felt that they would be happy to shoot from and you were quite happy to let them shoot from there because you could get bodies in the way and obviously Jamie Young's a top goalkeeper as he showed tonight. Was that something you identified coming in, funneling them into those sort of areas? So, so what we didn't want it was, and they did it a few times, uh, straight long balls over the top that actually hurt us a couple of times, which we... We can do. We can defend that better, um, and because once they get their wingers one on one, they can actually hurt you because they're, they're top wingers. They're, they're Australian international. So we didn't want to be left with our fullbacks one v one on a lot of occasions. So you know, then you double up with them and, and uh, allow them. If if they're shooting from outside the box, we fancy that Jamie Young and we will get pressure on the ball. That it's a forced shot. Uh, so they didn't really have too many clear chances inside the box. And, you know, if you can do that against a side like City, where, you know, then you, your actual structure is pretty good. So at times we could have uh, defended a little bit better on a few occasions, but the majority of the time we did it well. You mentioned how he defended as a team, but you can't help but talk about Leo and Tamaki and how they play, but especially Leo in terms of what he does defensively, but also in terms of leading from the back. How important is that when you've got someone like Leo as like that linchpin in the heart of the back four? He's a presence. We spoke about how much of a presence that he will be. Before he's, uh, he started playing, you know, the people asked what type of player is he. I said he's, he's a 
defender that's got a presence on the field. And, um, and not only uh, without the ball when he defends and puts his body on the line, but with the ball he's got a calmness. So he wins the ball when he's able to travel with it if he has to or pick out a pass. And um, you know that that goes uh, a long way because that that you know relieves pressure when you're you're defending for a long period. So yeah, he he was good and Tamaki was great as well because you know I took Tamaki off at half time last week. That showed good character. You know that that he ended up performing like he did. So very pleased for for them too, but pleased for the whole team. You spoke about how you don't like set up planning to play counter attacking football, but kind of ended up with it as as the game went on tonight. Did you find that that almost kind of played into your hands in the way that Lockie Wales and Connor Payne were able to use their pace to, to really provide that threat, uh, along with Diamandi, obviously? Well, was, was that kind of a, a, an incidental positive that came from the way the game played out? Uh, uh, not an incidental positive. It was more that uh, we've practised that when teams sit off of us, how we should play, when teams press us, how we can play. And uh, when you've got pace, uh, it's a risk for opposition to play that way. But they were chasing the game and they wanted to play that way and uh, and we, you know we were able to catch them out on a few occasions so we know that we can we can switch it up if we need to uh, so you know it uh, that's what happens when you take the lead sometimes you know team needs to come out a little bit and we've got the players like Lockie, Dylan Wenzel Halls and uh, and Connor Payne that can cause problems they weren't any causing problems in behind they also got into good areas good pockets to pick up the ball that they were the first outlet for us Speaking of uh, preferring not to play on the counter in transition and given the complexion tonight and given the fact that only one team has won a game this season with more possession, how much of that is, is a league-wide trend? Uh, that's a good question. Though. Sometimes it, it, it's funny because, you, you know, look, we... Uh, Look, I don't think that it's just because it's, a, you know, who's got more possession is going to win the game or who's got less possession is going to win the game. Uh, I think that's what you do with possession and uh, and how you use that possession. You know, sometimes we felt that we, we, we forced it a little bit too much on occasions because uh, it, it wasn't the right time to force it. So we could have kept the ball a little bit more. But, um, yeah, it, it is a little bit sometimes, uh, you know, the way the league is going at the moment, it looks like majority of the teams that have got less possession are winning. That can easily change very quickly. OK, so in situational terms, what do you think the team was forcing? What were they forcing? What did you think the players were forcing? In what situations did you think they were forcing? Oh, there's certain moments that where we could have kept the ball when we weren't able to get in behind them, when they dropped pretty quickly, that we could actually kept the ball in their, their attacking half, well, our attacking half. So then we can control the game a little bit better. Um, you know, but that, that happens sometimes because we know that it's, a, it's an out for us. We know that we're, there's, there's an opportunity for us to attack. And then, uh, and then you know, if it doesn't eventuate, let's just keep it. You know, it's it's not a, a negative. I'm not talking about negatives. It's talking about players understanding. You know, we've been on, on the back foot for a little bit. All right, maybe it's not the time to go and get them. Maybe it's the time to just keep it a little bit longer. Just following up on one part from your previous answer, John, when you talked about it's not whether you have more of the ball or less of the ball. It's what you do with it when you've got the ball. Does that stat one only one team winning this season with more possession? Does that maybe infer then that there's a league-wide trend that A-League men clubs aren't to flash when they get on the ball then, if that, if just following along with your train of logic as of yet? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I, I really <laughs> don't. It, you know, to be honest, I'm not looking at the trends too much because I'm trying to focus on my, my team and what we can do and do better and uh, how we can improve even more. But yeah, I don't want to go off on trends. That, that's more your job to do. Fair enough. <laughs> um, on the subject of you've got a game coming up very soon, can, I imagine after going almost pretty well playing a full game, Diamante is not going to back up and play on Tuesday. But how many other rotations should we expect from your side coming up midweek? A lot. A lot. Yeah, a lot. Look, we want to win every game, and and it's not to dismiss the FFA Cup as uh, not important. But we also got other players that haven't started games, and they they deserve an opportunity, and and, and we want to see them as well, and, and see how they they cope. You know, with a pressure of an actual official game, and uh, and we believe in them, and also we have to be careful because you know we didn't have a good pre-season in terms of the, the COVID situation, so we didn't have a lot of friendly games to play. So we weren't able to like play every three days to test our body, um, and I don't want a situation that a player with a small squad that we have got 
to get injured. So, you know, we again, we don't want to take a risk. We want to make sure that uh, we get through this period, and uh, but we'll still be there to try and beat Wellington. Just on Alexander Provich, didn't play tonight. I thought it was hamstring tightness. Like, how, how severe are you worried about him? Like, how long is he going to be out for? Not worried about it because it's not a, a major injury, but, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a setback for him. And, and we know that that can happen with overseas players when they come in and they're a little bit late, playing a little bit of catch up. We're just thankful it's nothing too serious. But we need to get him right physically. Um, and, and that's why I'm saying about picking up points now because once, you know, the, the back end of the season comes and then this finals football and that, you know, we have to make sure that he's at the top of his game and uh, everyone is as well. Do you just in terms of a timeline, do you expect it to be a couple of weeks out? Or? Yeah, not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, it will probably be a couple of weeks. He won't. He won't be involved on Tuesday night. And any other, I guess, injuries or anything to come out of tonight? No, at the moment, no injuries. Maybe the the month might say that he's got some little niggle, but I don't think he has. <laughs> uh, just coming back to you know younger players and the idea of giving them tangible minutes and opportunities. Your thoughts on how uh, Disubayu went tonight? Good. Really good. He, he, he works at this sort. He's, you know what, he, uh, um, I don't want to get into it, but I was disappointed they had to go away with the under-23s for that long period. It set him back because in pre-season, um, he actually started against City in our first hit out and did really well. Um, and I'm so, so happy that he got an opportunity now. He's starting to find his rhythm again in training and um, and getting better so you know he, he did well when he came on Dylan Price did well when he came on as well you know he worked hard um, and we know the quality has going forward so you know they're players that will get uh, an opportunity on Tuesday night and uh, you know we've got other young boys that haven't featured so far and they'll get an opportunity again because you know they they deserve it because the way they've been training and hopefully they can perform well. Just to bounce off that, I think we saw it with, with Melbourne Victory as well the other night with the timing of these FFA Cup games. How important is it also beyond rotating your squad to maybe get some... I, I suppose they are sort of cutthroat minutes for some of these young players, you know, must, you know, games they've got to win, they're elimination games. Like, what, is it, what does it do for them? Oh, it's, it's great. It's really important because uh, when we need to throw them in against the Melbourne City, you know, they, they've experienced it. And they've experienced, you know, it's, it's one thing talking about a friendly game in pre-season. There's another thing talking about, you know, an FFA Cup tie where it's cutthroat, where it's, uh, you know, everything on the line, really, on that one-off game. Um, and that's great for young players. And that's great for the players that haven't been playing. Um, so, you know, it's important because we're going to need them. We will need them this season. It's, we've been around the A-League long enough to know that it's, uh, your squad's important and, uh, and it gives them a, an opportunity to show that, the, you know, when they are um, needed and for them that they're confident to go in and do well. Uh, just going back to so when you're talking about the different kind of game styles that your team can play in depending on what's needed in the moment. Wenzel Halls as opposed to Prejevic, they're obviously kind of are fighting for a similar position. Can we expect to see which of those uh, which of those are playing to reflect kind of the game plan heading in? Will there be different game styles depending on who, who, who you've got up front leading the line? Oh, look, it will... Um it will depend on who's available first, and uh, I've said last time they can play together as well. So, and, and that that can happen. Um, yeah, at the moment it hasn't happened, but uh, you know we're still trying to get uh, Alex to, you know, f gel with the team, get to understand our our structures, and uh, you know we we also know that uh, when we have majority of possession, that Dylan can play with uh, Alex no problem. So there will be times that they will play together. Thank you. Thank you.